we also did um, a very detailed campaign in um, Haridwar, Uttarakhand, uh, where we treated something known as the Luxor drain, uh, which is a many kilometer long drain. Uh, the, uh, the work was uh, given to us by Namami Ganga as a contract. Um, and uh, IIT Rurki was tasked with uh, measuring the water quality parameters before the treatment, during the treatment, and after the treatment. Uh, they published the results of their findings uh, in this paper in 2021, uh, which I can share with you offline if any of you are interested. Uh, the, uh, just to give you a sense, uh, before the treatment started, this is what the water bodies looked like. They were completely infested with uh, garbage, uh, and high levels of BOD and COD, uh, which was coming not only from sewage, but also a distillery plant and a sugar mill. Um, after testing, uh, we were able to completely uh, clean up the water body. Uh, we were able to witness uh, the emergence of uh, birds and animals in the vicinities of the water body, something that had been unheard of for many years at that facility, in, the, in that region. And we were also able to dramatically see improvements in the uh, clarity of the water. Um, there was no smell whatsoever, and there were no mosquitoes also, also. Right, So we were able to achieve all this because we were able to completely re-establish the aquatic food web in that water body, in that, uh, uh, you know, in the region where we were testing and uh, so forth. So just to give you a sense, we were also able to dramatically increase the dissolved oxygen levels of the water, uh, you can see here a small handheld dissolved oxygen meter giving you a reading of five, showing you dramatically um, uh, high higher levels of dissolved oxygen than what was present before the treatment uh, with this product. Uh, just to give you a sense for what the BOD and COD levels were, um, you know we were able to uh, dramatically reduce the BOD about by about. Uh, 86%, the COD came down by 91%, the suspended uh, solid count came down by about 91% as well. Um, the dissolved oxygen went up from 1.2 to about six, um, and the fecal coliform population came down by 95%. Uh, so these were the summary of um, results that has been presented in that publication in 2021. Uh, uh, I just wanted to share with you another case study. Uh, this time, it's a case study uh, done at a STP in uh, Molarbund, uh, which is a part of uh, New Delhi. Uh, we did these studies in 2021, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, for about six weeks. Um, we have uh, just wanted to share with you um, some of the results from this STP, just to give you an idea of what we accomplished. Um, the STP is a typical... Um, simple STP with uh, about three MLD coming in uh, and the water sort of collects in the collection tank and then it makes its way through the five different chambers before it comes out. Um, the What we did is that initially we dosed all the different tanks with our product um, and then um, after a few days we switched to just dosing the first tank with our product. So we would do daily dosing of new algae um, every day. Um, we also uh, were able to turn down the aerators uh, in the uh, in the in the in the STP, and I wanted to show you um, what that performance looks like. Um, so, as part of the study, uh, we measured um, the following parameters: the pH, BOD, COD, ammonia, phosphate, grease levels, suspended solids, fecal coliforms, dissolved oxygen levels and nitrogen levels. Uh, so these are the 13 parameters that we monitored during the course of the study. Uh, on day zero, we had um, certain values of the inlet and outlet parameters for the water, right? So you had polluted water coming in and relatively clean water coming out. Um, so this is sort of the benchmark which we were using to evaluate the performance of new algae. Um, so on day zero, this is still the STP, which is being operated with the conventional technologies. Uh, at the end of this day, we were able to turn down the aerators uh, and start with new algae dosing. Um, after about 13 days, uh, we were able to uh, see that the output water quality parameters um, that were achieved 
uh, with new algae dosing were very comparable to those that were achieved through conventional treatment, right? So you can compare the two blue columns on this slide uh, and see that there is a considerable um, reduction uh, in the uh, various parameters uh, towards the targets. Um, and it was something that uh, was uh, dramatic. It's comparable to what was achieved with the STP, but uh, it was something that was done without the use of aerators, right? So just with new algae technology alone, right? So we were able to accelerate the growth of plants, which then produced oxygen and triggered the aerobial bacterial, aerobic bacterial breakup of organic matter. Um, we then continued the trial uh, on day 24. These are the inlet and outlet parameters that were observed. Uh, and again, we um, continued the trial for another two weeks. And on day 45, we measured the inlet and the outlet parameters. So what you can see here is that by six weeks or so, we were able to um, dramatically stabilize the implementation protocol and the dosing and achieve a very stable set of water quality parameters uh, without the help of aerators, right? So there are no, the, the aerators are operating at only 25% of what they were uh, before, right? So if the aerators were operating for 24 hours before, after we started new algae dosing, we were only operating those aerators uh, for about five to six hours, right? And we feel that with further additional dosing of new algae, you may be able to bring this down even further. And uh, of course, these are the standards for water quality parameters, which you all know about. So you can see that the output water quality parameters achieved with new algae were well within the standards mandated by the pollution control. Uh, so the percentage in terms of just in terms of percentage reduction, we saw 90% reduction in the BOD, 75% reduction in COD, ammonia, uh, phosphates, uh, oil and grease levels, and suspended solids, right? And we saw high, you know, if you look here um, in, in, the, in the last blue column uh, on day 45, the dissolved oxygen level that was measured here was 5.9. So what this goes to show you is that with this technology, you can not only bring down um, all the various water quality parameters that are mandated by the Pollution Control Board, but you can actually dramatically increase the oxygen levels uh, and give um, water that is very suitable for aquatic life uh, and for uh, gardening and irrigation purposes, right? So if you were to use the treated water um, for the purposes of irrigation, it's of great benefit uh, to the soil uh, bacteria and the soil health. And if you were to use this water and simply release it into a river, it would also be beneficial for the aquatic species in that river. Right? Um, so it's a, it's a real uh, plus to be able to give um, high levels of dissolved oxygen uh, for downstream uh, purposes. Uh, we also did a case study of our product um, in... Um, uh, in Lodi Garden, a lake in New Delhi. Um, the, we have some of the results uh, of lake studies published in a separate publication, um, which is also attached on the slide, which I can share with you. Um, this uh, uh, lake, before we started, was dominated by blue-green algae and green algae. There were low levels of dissolved oxygen, leading to diminishing fish levels. Uh, there was a lot of foul odor, and mosquitoes were abundant. After treatment, we were able to dramatically improve the water quality. Fish and ducks were visibly uh, abundant. Uh, clarity had improved and uh, the bottom was visible because the sludge had been removed. Um, so in, just to give you a quick summary, um, we were able to remove all the odor, uh, eliminate uh, or uh, bring the fecal coliform population uh, below the mandated limits. Uh, and bring down the BOD, COD, uh, again, below the mandated limits, increase dissolved oxygen, keep it above five, uh, and again, bring down the phosphates and the sludge to the levels that are required. So this is just to summarize uh, what we found at Lodi uh, Garden uh, in New Delhi uh, several years ago. So I won't go into the details. I can share these numbers with you uh, uh, offline. Um, so just to give you a sort of a summary, you know, what are the benefits uh, that we give uh, to farm uh, to customers uh, of different sorts. You know, our product, like I mentioned, uh, and this technology and this approach 
can be applied to lakes and drains. Uh, it can also be applied to aquaculture uh, farmers and uh, STPs and ETPs. Um, so we have the capacity to dramatically uh, uh, revitalize and uh, restore the aquatic ecosystem in, in the lakes and drains. And by doing that, we bring all the water quality parameters uh, to within the mandated limits. Uh, we provide similar benefits um, for aquaculture, where we help establish a disease-free environment. We reduce the need for aerators in those um, aquaculture ponds. We reduce the needs for a lot of um, uh, antibiotics um, that are used by farmers. So we are able to dramatically improve the, uh, the yields of the fish. We are able to improve the health of the fish. Uh, we are able to prevent mass fish kill and uh, we are able to uh, keep and make that pond a much more commercially viable operation. Right? In the context of STPs, again, we are able to give similar benefits. We are able to ensure that all the water quality parameters come within the limits mandated by the PCB, uh, but without the need for aerators. Right? So we are able to save um, uh, a lot of electricity uh, for the uh, for the consumer, uh, we are able to reduce the costs associated with the purchase of uh, uh, purchase of uh, aeration equipment and the maintenance of that equipment. And um, we are also able to improve the reliability of the STP. And uh, because sometimes there are excess uh, excess uh, waters, sorry, excess inflow that is coming in, um, and that also needs to be treated. With this approach, by reducing the processing time, we are able to effectively increase the amount of inflow that a particular STP with a particular design point is able to uh, serve. Right? So we're able to dramatically reduce the processing time and increase the processing capacity of the STPs with this approach. Of course, we are able to bring down uh, the, uh, the nitrogen and the phosphorus levels and give uh, high levels of dissolved oxygen for downstream uh, applications right, of, the, of the water. Uh, so just to give you a, a conclusion, you know, what is our approach? Yeah, so what we are able to do is uh, basically um, use um, a nutrient solution that dramatically accelerates the growth of diatoms and uh, diatoms increase fish growth. Um, you know, when sometimes some of the diatoms, when they become heavy, they sink uh, to the bottom and that increases carbon sequestration. Uh, the, there's also capture, carbon dioxide capture that happens and potential deacidification of the, of the water body. And for many applications, what's really important is that the oxygen that comes from the diatoms due to photosynthesis uh, greatly increases the effectiveness of um, bacteria for the purposes of uh, breakdown of uh, uh, sludge and suspended organic matter. Um, the diatoms, uh, you know, when they absorb a lot of nutrients and reduce and remove the excess pollution, they remove the nutrients that could potentially trigger the harmful algal blooms um, and uh, the toxins that get into the water because of those blooms. So we have a very comprehensive uh, set of benefits that comes uh, by shifting uh, water bodies to a diatom dominated water body. Um, and uh, we believe that it has far reaching implications uh, for solving uh, water problems and helping tackle climate change. So that's, our, that's my talk. Um, um, and I'm happy to uh, participate in the discussion.